Ted Jones messed with the wrong melon farmers. Ted Jones, I also call him the eighth wonder of the real estate world. Ted Jones, who knows, you know, it could be. Ted Jones? The Ted Jones World Podcast. Hello, and as I adjust my microphone, welcome to episode 15 of the Ted Jones World Podcast. I am your host, Ted Jones, and to the left of me, to the right of you on the uh, camera over here, Christy on, pro- professional tennis player, excuse me. How are you? I'm pretty good. You're pretty good? Yeah. Okay, we have Pat Charmel sitting in the Ted Jones World seat. I'm in the captain's have, chair um, today. watched a, 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 an episode feels or so two good to before. be in the boss's chair. Um, he is sitting in my chair. You know that light, um, what, what color is that? Light brown? Yeah. Dark brown? What color is that? Let, just a I nice just leather. Tan, brown, tan brown, fall color. Christy, what's up? Great to finally have you on the podcast. Um, I've been bugging Christy for a little bit to come on the podcast, but she is finally here, and we are so happy to have her. Pat, are we so I'm, ecstatic to have her? Yes, we've been talking about it for a while. This is great. The fans have been waiting. This is great. They've been patiently waiting. So, um, Christy, it's now off season, and the last time I saw you was when you made the round of 16 at the U.S. Open, the 2019 U.S. Open. So just quick clap for that. That's unbelievable. Thank you, thank you. And you've been playing professional tennis for a number of years. So what was it finally like to get to that big of a stage and play, like, you know, in front of that many people? Yeah, it's weird. You just, I feel like I've been doing it for so long. I just kind of never expected it to happen. I feel like in the beginning, you're, like, so anxious for it. And then after, I think it's my fifth year on tour, and I was just kind of like, well... I guess it's never happening. And then I feel like when you least expect it, it's when it actually happens. Right. There's, I've heard this quote. I don't know who made this quote up, but they're saying that, um, you know, success usually comes to people who aren't looking for it. And you were just out there grinding for years at a time. And it fin- you finally made it, you know, to the round of 16, which is an unbelievable feat. Um, you beat Svetlana Kuznetsova first round, who actually won the U.S. Open in 2004. Highest ranking, number two in the world. You beat her in the first round. I was there cheering you, cheering you on, um, you know, as the listeners and viewers heard in the past, had a broken jaw about 14 mm-hmm. weeks that ago. That didn't man. stop you. It didn't stop me. I was, nope. I was out there like a chip. Support the homies. And obviously, Christy hooked um, Julio and I up with the credentials. So we were there for or we were there for as many matches as we, you know, as we could be there for. Um, I was actually there for three out of the four. So I was definitely a big fan. Um, but such a cool experience. And, I, you know, I just wanted to know if that, I mean, is that something that you can now, you know, rest your laurels on? Is that something like, okay, I've made it this far. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really need to, you know, accomplish anything more in the tennis world. Is that something that you're thinking or no? Uh, not really. I mean, like, I guess the more you think about results, like the more pressure you put on yourself. So it's like, yeah, it's super great that it happened. But from now, it's just like, let's see how far I can keep going. Right. And it's also just such a crazy thought that like, you know, two years, like a little bit over two years ago, you beat Naomi Osaka in England, 6-1, 6-1 on grass. And then, like, you know, you beat the number one girl in the world, excuse me, number one woman in the world. And then, you know, you just come out and casually beat uh, Svetlana Kuznetsova, former world number two in the first round. Just such an exciting um, experience for sure. I mean, just to even sit on the sidelines and watch, I can only smile and tear up, of course, because I've known Christy for a very long time. We actually went to high school together. So um, when Chris, PCS. yeah, yeah, PCS, <laughs> professional what was, children's what school. What was Ted Jones like in high school? The same. The same? <laughs> the same? Yikes. Well, I mean, hope, hopefully that means that same, I'm just a nice different. guy, you know, same, exactly, same, same, but different. You know, a little bit older, a little bit of more of an aged wine. A little less cool. Dude, I don't, I don't really like wine really much. I'm like, no? a, I'm a coffee guy. So I'm like an, <laughs> okay. an old coffee Kind of two different bee. things, but. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't really know how like oranges. wine, yeah, wine ages in terms of like, um, I don't know, something that's delicious, whatever. I'm not a big <laughs> wine guy. So Christy, <laughs> when we were actually in high school, you were 16 years old. Uh-oh, somebody didn't silence their phone in it's the studio. Me. It might be it Pat me. over there. It's not me. I don't have okay. a thing. So anyway, when, uh, when um, we were 16 years old in high school, Christy played in the main draw of the U.S. Open against, was it world number one at the time, too? She's six. Well, she had made it to world number one, Dinara Safina, and Christy still put up a huge battle, uh, lost 6-3, 6-4 in that, in that match in 2008. So what a wild experience, you know, playing the U.S. Open when you're 16 years old and then going back when you're 27 
and getting to the fourth round. But hey, I don't really know much about the experience. So Christy, what what were you thinking? Um, you know, just going back onto those um, you know big show courts and really showing is you know showing a better effort than you did eleven years ago. Yeah, it's weird because when you're like sixteen, you don't know anything, so right. you're like, totally. oh yeah, I'm gonna be back here. Like I'm gonna be back here, be back here next year, uh-huh. and then when it doesn't happen, it's like, oh next right. year next year and then at some point you're like oh it's never gonna happen is it so like when you were 16 and you were in i guess a normal high school you know as we went to um what like what were your thoughts you know you had just like played uh, you know a woman who's number one in the world essentially and now you're about to go to stanford where you're like uh, were, you, were your thoughts you know in a place where you're like all right you know i think that i can just put my you know put my nose forth and keep moving forward especially when you were a freshman in stanford and you won the pac-10 title you know what i mean like how did you feel like all right i'm really still here after i just played dinara safina like you know within the last couple of months like okay do i really need to be at stanford you know learning when I, shouldn't i just go out and get to the my full potential you know at this time or what, what were you thinking the sad thing is by the time I graduated high school I was like so over tennis so like I was going to college to like see if I could like revamp you know see if I still liked the sport even um and then I did really well my freshman year and I was like oh, okay like maybe I can play some pro after and then I got injured for like year year and a half uh-huh. so that must have been tough yeah it was it so <laughs> you know you're saying like you were kind of over tennis when you went to stanford do you think that as you won that title you know a pac-10 title you know that's all the top schools in california um ucla pat can you name a few or oregon who else was in the pac-10 cal cal usc, USC. yeah i think you should ask the person who was in yeah, the well, pac-10 obviously well it's the pac-12 now <laughs> right Pac-12. so Pac-12, um yeah. there are a couple more teams that were added but um just a place where you were like, you went to Stanford, you were already kind of over tennis, and then you won this huge title. I mean, did that just kind of bring like your motivation down a little bit, you know, after winning that title and already being in a mindset of being over tennis? Uh, I don't think the title had anything to do with it. I think it was more like being on a team. Like it was like getting, it was being fun again, you know, like spending time around girls who like push you to be better, who they just feel like a f- second family. So it was like, Oh, yeah, I guess it's not so bad because I feel like when you're like at the end of your junior career, it's just like my mom traveled with me a lot. So like we're getting to the point, like the boiling point of like I kind of want to be independent and she stole my mom. And then I'm like so over traveling. I just want to be like normal. So. Right. Um, So I actually played college tennis as well, but not on, you know, as high of a level as uh, Stanford. But I definitely understand the team aspect. It was just super fun just to like travel around in the bus or like for example like you travel to cool places and see a lot but it's definitely like there's a lot on your plate being a you know a student athlete especially i feel like a student athlete who's not bringing as much revenue into the school you know as a football or basketball obviously you know stanford sells tickets and you guys have like big days where like people come out and support the tennis but there it's there's just such a difference in that um, college football and college basketball at almost all division one schools bring in a lot of revenue. Mm-hmm. And then like tennis, there's probably like, you know, 10 schools that bring in really any revenue and not really to support the team traveling and yeah. such. So it's just like an interesting dynamic, how like one could go to college and be like, oh, okay, I'm, ex- I'm expecting like all this, you know, um, notoriety on campus, blah, 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 this and that. But it's nothing like being a basketball or football player. Well, which the I'm funny sure you thing see. is that Stanford, like, no one knew who Andrew Luck was. Cause oh, really? School is just like complete. Right. N- so it'd be like Bill Gates comes on campus and the place goes nuts, and it's like Andrew Luck just like rides his bike, and people are like, "Who is that?" Right. Like, so <laughs> Andrew Luck actually um, just retired from the Indianapolis Colts this past season. What was he? Twenty nine years old. He's twenty nine. Tw- just had a baby. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Luck. That is terrific. <laughs> um, but, you know, a sport like football, I mean, really takes so much out of you. You know, you see this guy retiring so early. And tennis is a sport that, you know, you could play forever. You know, speaking of which, you and I need to hit. And we haven't played in forever, believe it or not. Um, but we will. And this is something that, like, you know, uh, playing football together doesn't really happen past 29. And I don't really know if you can, like, play football with your friend. Other I mean, unless like, you're, like, day. tossing the pigskin. Yeah, turkey <laughs> day. Like, Pat, you know, I toss you the football. We you played two-hand touch last week. Well, that was different. We played flag. We played <laughs> flag football. Um, but it, it's just something that, like, you know, tennis is a sport of longevity. So um, how do you feel about, you know, potentially being a 30-year-old and still on tour and getting your best results yet? No. <laughs> what do you mean no? No, um I don't I don't want to play for like too long. Okay. I'd like to like wrap up 
the tennis and then well do you i mean do you do you have an idea of you know when or, or it's just kind of like when you feel it uh like mostly when i feel it but right. i have a feeling like when when i have like the when i reach the 30s hopefully like in the early 30s i'm like yeah i'm good right because it's not like about the money or anything so right. I'm, I'm like perfectly fine on right i just want to like i feel like i've especially after this year it's like i've accomplished so much and yeah I've like proven to myself mm-hmm. So at this point, it's just kind of like when I'm ready to like wrap it up, regardless yeah. of where I'm at. Right. I mean, you were the star of th- this past U.S. Open. It was amazing. I mean, for sure, American star, for sure. Um, you know, such a cool experience, you know, as I, as I keep saying. But, um, you know, for the people who are like, you know, anywhere from 150 to um, like 250 in the world, you know, I can imagine getting around the world, you know, to play these tournaments is more than tough, especially if you're maybe traveling with a coach, you know, getting two separate rooms at hotels, um, flying, of course, and then just getting around and living. Um, <clears throat> do you think that there, there's like a threshold of like what you need to really be ranked in order to be, you know, netting and living, you know, like netting like a certain amount of money, you know, after expenses? Um, is, is there like a certain ranking that you really need to be in order to be like fully um, financially stable, I guess I'll say, like where you're on top of everything and you're making money on tour? I guess it I mean, like being top hundred obviously helps because you're guaranteed pretty every much grand slam, slam yeah, right? Which is almost fifty k each, um, even if you lose first round. But it totally depends on, um, like I traveled by myself for pretty much the entire year, and this so, this past year, uh, the past couple ish years. Um, so my expenses were much lower than in years past, where I took a coach and everything was doubled pretty much. Okay. Plus, you're paying not only expenses but also for them like their whatever weekly or monthly salary pretty much. Um, so it's a lot of pressure in that regard versus like traveling by myself. It's like, I know I just have to cover my, my butt. Right, right, right. hundred yeah. percent. It's a lot easier when you're, when you just have to worry about yourself. Yeah, um, but as you get higher ranked, like the, the deals usually like, uh, coaches get like cuts of your main draw prize money. So you get percentages and everything. So while you do get more money, you're also spending more money and like, you know, when you're top hundred, you want to travel with your coach more often because everyone does. And mm-hmm. that's kind of what it takes to get to the next level. And every time it feels like you make it to the next step, there's more money you have to spend. Um, and maybe it's not directly proportionate to how much money you're bringing in. Right. And did you feel like, um, you know, as soon as you had this big result, this past US Open just three months ago, um, that, you know, the sponsorships were coming in more and, you know, you're getting more attention, obviously, in the media. But uh, is there, uh, have there been companies that now approach you and want to give you, you know, a year long deal or something like that? I mean, if like, you can talk on it, <laughs> I'm like 27 on my way out. I'm not. No, exactly, come on. But, like, come <laughs> on. Patchy's not on her way out. Tell her nope. she's not on her way out. Well, again, we've been we're bringing up highlights. again, according to you, 35 is old. So well, you keep saying that. Is a, if, yeah, but bro, we're 28. You know, Christy's a young Just 27 out here. I mean, she's moving every single day, still training, even during the off, off season. Sorry, almost knocked over the monitor here um, for those who are watching at home. Thank you guys for tuning in. Christy on again, um, c- reached a career high of world number 87 in the world. And um, that is amazing, Pat. You know, what are we number I'm 87 not eight, I was going to say, right I'm now. not 87th in anything. Um, so, so and I don't think we'll, I ever we'll will see, be. We'll <laughs> see, bro. But we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, um, you know... Uh, you know, we'll move forward in life and, you know, get up there to the main stage, bro. Number 87. Maybe 87. Yeah. Yeah. 80, well, yes, yes, of course. 87 listeners of the of pod. Of course, <laughs> of course. Um, so, Christy, I actually, I was, um, I, I was uh, wondering, you know, you know, you're talking about how you travel alone and such. Um, when you're at, t- at tournaments, you know, I, I remember when I was in the juniors, you know, I'd always love some kid from Long Island or whatever who's playing at the same tournament as me. You know, I'd, I'd love to hit with him uh, before the match or whatever. Um, get a court somewhere, hit for 30, warm up. So like when you're in Europe or you're in a place that you don't know too many other people in the draw, who do you hit with? Like who do you warm up with like when you wake up or, or before a match or whatever it is? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I've done a pretty good job of like making friends on tours, so I'm not too picky about warm ups. Um, but probably one of the best practices I had at the Open was Bia- was with Bianca and like – the points practice points Bianca, Bianca who? G oh, okay. Yeah, she okay. may or may not have won the tournament. Yes. But, like, so Bianca, yes, won the tournament um, this past U.S. Open. Yeah, so but it shout was out to like her. Very our, cool. 
our practice points were insane. It was so much fun. Nice. Um, but I feel like most of the girls, like we get along. So it's, you know, as long as it's a good vibe, it's a good practice. And who would you say, who's your, you say you get along with, well with all the girls, which I know you obviously do. Very nice person. And I love you. But um, who's, who's your, um, who's your best friend on tour? Would you think like you see them at all the tournaments, you get along, you text them outside of the tennis world? Because I know that's tough. People, you know, are super competitive in tennis, but, you know, you, you see them a lot of days out of the year. So yeah. and m- the majority of the time, you're probably seeing them in between matches. They're I not would always just right like on the court. to like break the stigma, which I don't know why it's still here, but like right. W2, like we like we get along really well. Like there's a lot of friendships on mm-hmm. the court. I feel like maybe like 10 years ago, it was kind of like, the standoffish era where right. like, everyone was like their own little like diva per se where like, i feel like, like it, it was just very cool to just act like a, a john McEnroe or something like yeah, that like and maybe like, like you don't give an f like right, whatever yeah and like you had to like pay attention to yourself everyone had their own little circle totally but, like and like a bunch of us now are like no one i mean you know you have a couple who are do their own thing but like for the most part it's like all the Americans get along. We get along with the Brits, we get along with the Aussies, get along with literally anyone who can pretty much speak English. Right. And even the girls who can't speak English, you'd like find a way to get along with them. Okay. <laughs> and, but best friend on tour, who'd you uh, say? Probably. I mean like Jenny Brady. Jenny Brady. Spend a good so Jenny went together. to UCLA. For correct? Two years, correct. Correct. Oh, okay. So she went for two years and then, um, joined the pro tour. Yeah. Jenny. Um, nice girl. I've met Jenny briefly. <laughs> I think she was sit, um, she was sitting down as I as I was getting up when I was in the players' lounge <laughs> at the U.S. Open. Thank you, Christy. On Christy, I actually have one second, one second here for the viewers. I actually have these these little credentials oh right behind me of of when I was at the U.S. Open with Christy on. This have is the ones amazing. From high school, I do have the ones from high school back here, Christy. I'll give you one. Check it out. Full transparency. Uh, Teddy was Megan Shaughnessy's hitting partner. I was, I was. You know what? I don't think I can. Honestly, I put them on here, and they look a little bit tangled, so I don't want to waste anyone's time on this podcast. We'll take some pictures later, and we'll 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 throw them on the screen. We'll plug them. Do you guys know what your first name is? Yeah, Ted. Of course. What do you mean? (laughs) Full transparency out here. Ted Jones World podcast. Um, You know, we'd love to get some questions. You know, um, we have in the past. And uh, Christy, a very interesting girl. So, you know, shoot us questions and I will answer them on the next podcast because <laughs> Christy won't be here. I was going to say, it's and a little also, late for that. Also, Christy, <laughs> thank you so much for showing up in this tundra hailstorm. Pat was even complaining about coming cross town and you came from way further than him. So we appreciate it out here. Um, Christy, weird question. Do you ever hit airstrokes like when you're walking through like the airport? You're just Not like, like you do. <laughs> okay, so like, I'll legit like be walking through anywhere and I'll just hit like a skipping forehand. There is I don't know why. It's, I feel it's like a lot of guys weird. do that. Right. Uh, yeah. Ne- like never ever have I have I seen like a female tennis player. There's this kid in, in uh, middle school uh, that I went to middle school with and he was like a junior like like good tennis player. Uh-huh. And like anytime you would be talking to him in a conversation, he'd just be like, going, going like <laughs> wow, I'm right. like, Dude, that's so obnoxious. You, you have know, to stop. That's so annoying. And also, you know what Pat said? Pat's like, uh, you know, a good junior tennis player. But like, what the hell does good even mean? You know, there are honestly so many levels of good tennis players. Yeah, so I like, don't. I don't even know what the 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 system is that the USTA um, invented. I'm sure it makes sense, but I, I just don't understand it. And, you know, people will say like, oh, yeah, he's very good. He played throughout high school, Ted. He's, he's like going to be a great up. player. It's yeah, like, exactly. I'm, Ted. I'm like, grandma, what? Can you like <laughs> give me some background? Like tell him, tell him to send me like a 30 second clip of all his strokes. Yeah. But um, it, it's just a very different level, you know, like Division One tennis, Division Two tennis, Division Three tennis, then the Futures Tour, then Challengers Tour, then it, the main draw of, of, of the Grand Slam, excuse me, like qualifying Grand Slam's main draw. It's just like there's so many different levels. And do you think like as you've been on tour for so many freaking years, you've seen a number of players that didn't really promote themselves initially as like how good they were or whatever it was? I don't know. I feel like like everything's kind of blended, so it's not like distinct lines, you know. It's just kind of like you ebb and flow, and honestly, it just depends on the day. Like, some days you just feel like crap, and you're like, oh, I suck today. Right. But then other days you're like, oh, I can't miss. Right. So it just totally depends on, like... Right, but also, have you ever hit with someone who said they're really good and no. they were awful? No. 
No? I don't think so. That's great. See, like, the thing is, when you get to, like, a level of Christy's, you know, tennis <laughs> abilities, like, you're protected from that. You know what I mean? And, like, I feel like when, I, when I'm when i in Long Island or whatever I'm at and I'm looking for a tennis match in the city, there's a bubble across the street from my house. But, like, when I'm looking for someone to play tennis with, it's, like, it's very hit or miss. You know what I mean? Like, if, if somebody says they played college tennis, 100% I'll hit with them. But, like, they meant to leave out that it was for, like, a Division three program and they never played there or whatever was, it is uh, like that. I was looking for, like, someone to travel with me a couple years back. And so I was hitting with, like, a couple guys down in Florida. And literally within the first, like, 30 seconds, I was like, ooh, no. Oh, my was, God. Yeah, 30 seconds. Well, like, did it start, did you start off with I mini think, tennis, though? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, I mean, that's could, a telltale. Yeah, just, like, mini tennis I will get you in 30 like seconds. I think was Gerial role for oh, the team right, right, right. failed to mention that. So that right, was a bit tough. Right. So. I feel like you got to be super transparent when yeah, you're out there. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like when you're putting together like a tennis state or whatever it is, like uh, there needs to be a lot of transparency. I think that there's like when there's some level when you can be like, oh, yeah, this guy played at like a, you know, a top 50 um, division one program, you know, in the starting lineup. It's probably solid. You know, you can hit with him. Then, you know, it's just very I feel like there's there are thin lines between being a good tennis player and being a club champion. Let me tell you. Um, but um, what yeah, would you consider yourself. My, oh, my God. He hit me with that, too. Everyone's like, I yeah, what is this? What does this guy think? He's, doing? he's not on that. tour. He's in the middle. Um, OK, so I would consider I would consider myself like a, a solid Division one player for sure. hundred percent. I can hit with anyone. Lineup? Did, well, did I? Where did you play in your lineup? Uh, like four through six consistently. And number one and occasionally number two doubles. But like four through six consistently. Played for two and a half years. Didn't play for four. But I would consi- I would be able to hit with, I'd like to think, anyone. Maybe like, uh, maybe Serena might just like power through me and it would get really tough. Like at the baseline. In terms of like hitting down the middle, I mean. But... Because, well, like, obviously, you know, like, if we once we started hitting, you and I, like, once you get me, like, started to move to side, like, you'd kill me. But, like, down the middle, I can, like, I'll hit, like, all day, no problem. But I would consider Serena's power or something, like, pushing me back on the ba- baseline, then I'd maybe I'd start to miss a lot. But just besides that, I think I can hit with anyone, Pat, to answer you. So yeah. I would consider myself a solid Division One tennis player, yes. Very humble. Hit with Very anyone. humble. Yeah, you know? Well, not, like, I'm not playing much. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, but yes, that's what I would consider myself. So anyone's looking for a hitting partner. We got yeah, T. Jones. T. Jones over here. Okay. So Christy, you graduated from Stanford. Mazel tov. Very cool. You. Um, you graduated with a degree in tech, which is an interesting major, especially in, you know, Palo Alto, Alto, you know, being synonymous with Silicon Valley. Is that ever a thought in your mind, you know, that you'd be able to honestly kind of rest on that once you wrap up your tennis career in a few years that you know you go back to silicon valley and then maybe get a job in tech is that something that you're interested in or i don't know Yeah, i mean it's just i feel like everything's so open right now like one it's been five years so i am completely like out of the loop of what like i feel like everything moved so fast so i would have to like really brush up on my uh tech and stuff right but, but i mean you'd obviously have time and just having that degree is but, huge yeah, yeah yeah but i mean like i i would i don't know if i necessarily want to go back to uh like pally and stuff but even if i could like find a job out here in new york i feel like this is like second right um, totally so. i mean like google and facebook are taking insane amount of space up in like the new um the new buildings in in hudson yards excuse me facebook is in hudson yards rather um, but that's just like, you know, that's a small part of tech. Can I ask you know you what question? I mean? Yeah, what sure. What are your thoughts on Hudson Yards? I don't know. That's an interesting, that's an interesting question that you just brought up. I think it's a little weird. What do you mean? In what way? Uh, Pat, I'm looking at you because we actually, we talked about this the other episode. Christy, I'm happy you brought this up. Um, Pat's a big fan of Hudson Yards. I think it's weird. It's like mall-like. I don't we think I ever said I was a fan. Like, I, well, I mean, you were the one who told us, like, you know, stop by Hudson Yards. Yeah, we were okay, walking okay, by, sure. but yes. I would assume you were like, legit you, a block from it. Yeah, we were blocked by. Pat was like, I'm a fan of Hudson Yards. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's fly over that way. It's like, oh, I love Hudson Yards. But let's go. it's just, it, you know, it has a ton of great retail for sure. But like, it's getting a little bit too molly. I thought we were done with malls. It feels like New Jersey. It does, it does a little bit. And you know what? Being so close to New Jersey, it's just like you might as well just yeah. mesh it together, yeah. add it on. Um, but New Jersey, a great place. Chrissy, I lived there for six weeks. Say, we don't want to six. alienate our Jersey. She knows listeners. that. Well, she knows that. I was <laughs> born there. I grew up um, in New Jersey for six weeks before I moved to um, New York, before I hopped over the pond, I suppose. That being the Hudson River, the pond. You know how they say that phrase? 
Yes. All right, Pat. All right. <laughs> I've heard the phrase. Great. <laughs> Terrific. Um, so, um, Chrissy, we've been talking about a lot of interesting things here. And, you know, I, I think the listeners and viewers are, are going to like this. Um, so I actually saw on your story recently, um, I think you gave kind of like an ugh to the uh, documentary Game Changers mm-hmm. on Netflix. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that yeah. documentary. So I'm not anti-vegan or mm-hmm. an- anti like anything. I'm very like pro-choice for food. 100%. Like, very just want, laid just back in happy. general. Okay. But like... I find it really annoying when people watch one thing and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to go vegan. And it's like, do your research, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, especially for something where it's like, oh, are you vegan, Ted? Are no, you I'm not. I said the exact, we talked about, no, we talked about you're this yelling. and I said you're literally yelling. the exact same thing as yeah, you. Yeah, like, especially, it's like, if you go vegan for like environmental purposes, I think that's amazing. Okay. But if you're going to do it for like health, like you like want to like perform better in your life or sport, whatever, like you're going to... I've I've seen a lot of like former vegans mm-hmm. try and like pretend they feel amazing and then they hit this wall and they're like I have no energy and that the we're convinced that like the well, whatever the nutrients com- from the plants are going to give them everything by trying to tell everyone how great they feel mm-hmm. because they feel so bad. <laughs> okay, so just Thank to you. just to clar- just to clarify um Pat's little cough before what was that? Mm, the yeah. little mumble under your breath. Um, I guess I'm a semi vegan, you know, I don't have anything against people who are eating meat, whatever. Um, I still eat fish. So I guess I'm a pescatarian. Pes- yes. Pes- <laughs> pescatarian. Um, but I-, I don't know. I just feel like I don't really need to eat burgers or chicken or like a turkey. So I'm, I'm feeling fine the way I'm eating. And, and you're helping that's all I got to say. And, it's yes, di- yeah. and you know, and like I'm we said, it's different for different people. I think what Chrissy's saying and what I'm saying as well is like, if you're going to make a whole documentary, like basically telling people it's the better choice and you're going to perform better if you switch to a vegan diet right. when it's just not true everyone's different i think that's where well also it loses a lot of people also they didn't really show both sides well exactly right. it's like they they made these um it's not like they found research and made their conclusion they had their conclusion and found things to support them exactly very true so it's like the whole also thing of, of like points. your right. your the thing with like your cloudy blood. It's like exactly. right, right. There's I, definitely like a lot of talking points too that you can just be like, oh yeah, what do you mean they did their research? Right. It was cloudy blood. And it's like the I was listening to a podcast and obviously I know absolutely nothing about like blood and whatever. Uh-huh. So if I'm watching it, I'm like, oh my god, look right. what meat does to your blood. I, and this I pod- feel like I am this person, this, but continue. But this podcast <laughs> was like, look, it's like if you look at the factors, they put the veggie burrito against a meat burrito yeah but the but the meat burrito was meat and car like it also had rice and everything Mm -hmm. and the veggies whereas uh the veggie burrito is just veggies and carbs so it's the combination of the the meat with the carbs versus if you just had like a steak and veggies your blood would be clear so it's not the steak well, Chrissy also graduated with a degree from, in science as well. I didn't, I didn't mention that, <laughs> but I didn't know she was going to go on that rant. All right, I perfect. Like it. I want, well, want to hear more. You know what? I just think that it's an interesting documentary, and everyone should honestly just watch it and let me know what you think because it, it kept me, it kept me captive. I'll say that. Um, a lot of storyline there, but yes, I would like to see you know the other side. I would like to see a week of each, I guess, from a hundred people. It's gotta be more see than it, that. right? Or see athletes or something like that. Yeah. Fine, Pat. We'll get we'll get to there a thousand people. I I I have actually have a question for you. Speaking Who, of me? No, for Chrissy. <laughs> oh, of course. Go ahead. <laughs> Speaking of all that, how I'm very into like health and wellness and things like that and dieting. How do you when you're traveling a lot, how do you what's kind of like your workout, your exercise regimen? How do you you know, find meals that are like high quality meals to eat while you're traveling, when you're staying in hotels. Like what is kind of your routine like when you're on the road? Uh, yeah, that's tough. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when I'm actually at home, it's probably the easiest because like I can cook for myself. I know exactly what's going into my food. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in a city like New York, LA, whatever, you know that it's like you're getting good quality food, but sometimes you end up in like, especially like in the South in like a little more rural town. It's like, you're going to chain restaurants and Mm -hmm. like the nicest Mm -hmm. thing is an olive garden. Like, um, so it's tough to like be disciplined. And sometimes I, I'm always a fan of, uh, everything in moderation. So I will never be like, I will not eat this. Of course. 
be like if you want it just have a little bit of it that's fine um and then just like basically i I would i would say like you know as you're saying it's just like keep it clean make sure there aren't a lot of oils on the food right i I mean mean, that's like like something that just like sneaks up on you maybe even like going to like europe can be tough too like yeah because like the breakfast isn't exactly like you know i'm used to eating like eggs avocado toast for breakfast and then there they eat like a baguette yeah, yeah that's it's not like a yeah, yeah, just like a different <laughs> empty meal. cards like yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's just like trying to find ways to find your fuel and like yeah. just stick to the basics yeah. as much as you can and then it's like so much pasta right i can't control myself yeah and, then, yeah. and are you like wor- are you like working out <laughs> and stuff like that or are you just kind of resting between yeah, so, matches uh there's usually like a taper kind of schedule so like yeah. before the tournament you kind of amp up and then drift off and then during right. the tournament it's just kind of like maintenance work mm-hmm. um but it also depends like if your match is really tough then you're just pretty much doing recovery if yeah. it's like pretty easy you can do a little bit also depends if you have a day off if you're going back to back right it's just a lot of a lot of, a lot of like a lot of managing your body now yeah especially i mean you know if you get hurt you definitely got to take some time off that um, so Christy, we have a weekly segment on this show. Um, Pat, you know, wh- what's it called, man? Why, why don't you let Christy know what our weekly segment is called? Our weekly segment is called Don't Do That. Boom, boom, boom. I had to give him the little tap drum roll here because I guess we don't have that drum roll app that Pat <laughs> initially rolled out one episode. We'll There's an amazing little drum roll app that he had on his phone. I don't know. Okay, Christy, but um, this is basically the weekly segment where we there was something like annoying maybe that happened. And we just want to let people know, like, this is just common stuff that you don't do. And so this segment is called Don't Do That. And I guess I'll kick it off here. Um, I would love so, for you to kick it off. Okay. So as I said, treacherous weather today. Christy, again, thank you so much for coming. Pat, thank you for taking the, uh, what was it, the C train up here? <laughs> My man. Anyway, so it's about 40 degrees right now. Light little hailstorm. Um, I went across the street to Bean and... I guess I'll knock off the last part of the name because I don't want to get in trouble. But Bean and something, you know, and every coffee place is like named Bean and something, you know. So hopefully mm-hmm. they they won't hear me because I love that place. <laughs> but um, uh, the the woman who was working at the cashier um, had asked me previously, like last week, she was like, "Oh, isn't it getting a little bit too cold for the cold brew?" I was like, ah, "Okay, you know, fair enough." This is forty five degrees last week. Yeah, I understand. Like maybe it's a little bit cold. For the cold brew. But then I go in today. It's 40 degrees. And she goes, you're ordering a cold brew? It's so cold out. I was like, okay, lady. The first time, it was like funny and, you know, like endearing, I guess, that, you know, you wanted to start a conversation. Whatever. I, I understand that. But the second time, come on. Don't don't <laughs> yuck my yum. She's trying. Right? I'm going to be drinking cold brew coffee. I think I'm she's telling concerned you. for your health. Yeah. What? It's shocking my system. <laughs> I'm going to be drinking it until it's six degrees. Okay. To be fair. So I was ye- I was yelling at the, you know, about the Uber driver lifting the windows in my back seat last week. And I overreacted a little bit. But this, I don't think, is much of an, of, of an overreaction. This is a taste. A simply, you know, taste uh, cold over hot. I was going to say, I feel like iced coffee drinkers are like, they're a type of person like no matter okay. the weather yeah they will get their iced coffee mm-hmm. wait what do you mean in a, in a bad yeah. way no it's just like it doesn't matter what the, it's just like it's like an identity like right. you know it's not like you're like you know a what? weather-based you're right. like drinker you're like i'm an iced coffee drinker through and through okay interesting i wonder if that goes the same way for like a like a cold meatball hero or like a hot meatball hero. Are you yeah, like, a, like are, you, are you certain way? I, I <laughs> Sorry, that was like a <laughs> random was, ass like, sandwich was, to bring up. Couldn't tell you the last yeah. time I had Sorry, a meatball. I'm a, I, exactly, I'm a vegan. What I want, I'm dreaming yeah. about meatballs over here. But um, yeah, you're, you know, I do feel like you're right. Like there's like Maybe there are people who switch. There are people who like switch seasons. Yeah, like yeah, go yeah. like hot and cold. What right. are you? I mean, what are you I, drinking right now? I, you said you had some tea before that. Was that like yeah, hot or cold? It was like super, I should have brought up that reference, huh? I was but like, instead of like hot and cold tea, I was like meatball subs. I like my coffee <laughs> like slightly hotter than lukewarm. Like it's still warm, but I can chug it so, if I want to. So is that in the microwave for like 15 seconds? No, it's like straight off the stove, but then with a couple Ooh, ice cubes in it. You go stove oh. too. That's fancy, man. I would. N- I. I don't even. I wouldn't even think to put tea on the stove like that. What, I'm really? A chemic how else would you? No. I'd how else it, would you make tea? I put it. I put it in a cup with water and then put and it in put my it in microwave. microwave. Yeah. Oh man, dude. I didn't even know there was an. I didn't even know you could do that. Thank there you, Christy. There are also like it's called a teapot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, I'm. A, I mean, I'm a single dude here. I don't know what all these knickknacks are. Single I got. I got Christy stuff that she had on her rider. She wanted Pringles. 
and she, and, and she, no one's eating the Pringles. Pat's not even indulging I'm gonna in get his half. For Christmas. You know, that actually would be sweet. Oh, my God. Get me, yeah, uh, just a kettle, man. Yeah, Pat, what are you thinking of getting me over there? Yeah, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Yeah, know. we'll see if, um, if a uh, gift comes through. But Pat, you got me. You get me enough, man. Just your presence <laughs> is beautiful. And Christy, for the fourth time, thank you for coming out in this treacherous storm. But we'll get you home safe. Don't worry. Pat, do you have a don't do that for us, man? I know sometimes you get annoyed with the world. <laughs> just I don't have one just this kidding. week. I know you love life. I don't you don't have, have one this week. This week? Yours, you, you, yours are usually good enough to cover mine. Yeah, I think in that's in that circumstance it really did yeah i need to step it up i need to have one every week right but you know sometimes i'm just not that annoyed with the world i agree I think that's all right right yeah i guess so christy do you have anything else you want to share with us you got to have any questions for um ted jones here or uh pat charmel over there uh, no nothing i don't think so nothing okay well christy um thank you so much for joining us pat why don't you give christy a big round of applause uh we really appreciate it and just one last question um I want to ask you is like when you started playing tennis and like earning prize money, did that change for you? Was it like, oh, now I'm no longer playing just for fun. I'm playing, you know, for checks and honestly to live. Uh, no, I feel like when you're like a junior tennis player, there's so much pressure on you that it's like the difference between and then like with the addition of school and stuff, like it's a lot to balance um, versus like when you I feel like when you turn pro, it's just like the same but you're just I don't know I just never really thought about it um there's times where it's like oh yeah like I'm I'm they definitely need to like get some money in the bank right but, right right um, yeah I don't know I think it's different for certain like some girls need it more than others and whatever I think for me also just like the that I can kind of lean back on the fact that I do have a degree so if tennis does go like super south i can always just i feel comfortable getting a job but the, but the age that you started at in tennis in terms of getting like really serious where you're like wow i'm really good i can even be better well like what age was that would you think I where mean, you were like conscious like, of it i was like 13 bro really like, yeah it's like so young yeah so it's like oh do you like tennis it's like i mean it's been a job yeah for like the past 15 years but also life. it's just i mean it's probably like such a crazy thing just to have you know like instructors and people always want to play with play with you and just be like all over it where like it kind of was a job even like when you started yeah, playing sure. back in the day yeah. just because like you had to be out there in order to just get better and better yeah and it's like you had to make a lot of sacrifices yeah yeah i right, the sacrifices i tell you <laughs> um christy thank you so much for joining us episode 15 fireside chat with christian we have the candle lit here so very nice very christy intimate. thank you so much for joining us thanks, Ted. and um thanks for listening and tuning in peace <laughs>